I've been thinking recently about music and synthesis as an art in which time is the medium. Could you tell? You've probably noticed that time is as slow as it is fast. Time is always there with you. Yes, music does conspicuously take place in the onward march of time. For me, this kind of thought process is not really new, but uh, as I film this in summer 2020, the passage of time has recently been even harder to sort of pin down than it usually is. Time seems to be compressing and expanding at once, moving very, very slowly while also somehow moving incredibly fast at the same time. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, Maybe not, but anyway, I've been thinking about ways to sort of freeze and stretch time, moments in time, using the synthesizer. So, of course, I reach for the tape and mic or sound music machine and the morphogene in particular. Another thing I've had more time to do is play the piano at home, which I'm not amazing at, but I can play well enough to give us some rich chords to do something with here. Something to do is use the gene size control to sort of zoom in on a moment and expand it. With the slide control we can move forward and backward around this moment. in the way this sound is framed often to me makes it sound like it has a whole different character from what it sounded like originally. One interesting way to sort of stretch a sound out like taffy is the time stretch mechanism in the clock input. I've set the clock option to two on my SD card here so that it does time stretch regardless of the setting of the morph control. So generally we can think of the clock input as a sort of an automated turning of the slide control. Each pulse at the input slides it forward, letting the next gene know when to start. So it's as if the hand, my hand, or an invisible hand was turning through the slide control over and over again. Each pulse at the input slides it forward, so to speak, letting the next gene know when to start. When time stretch is turned on, and we start clocking it, we'll see the blue light turn on on the opposite very speed window. And instead of incrementing with each pulse, it moves forward smoothly and constantly. And it also constantly recalculates and changes if the clock rate also changes. With Morph turned up, the overlapping genes have different start points, letting them sort of cascade through the splice. And once the time stretch has begun, the speed of movement through the splice is not affected by gene size unless it's turned all the way down. Even if gene size changes, the time taken to move through the full splice is totally determined by the clock rate. It 
fact, very speed and morph are the same. We can change them without altering the length it takes to get through the splice. stop the clock, the morphogene will shortly realize that no clock is still incoming. And it will stay wherever we left it until we move the slide control. Now let's clock it slowly. This recording of a piano that's due for a tuning with a cheap field recorder in an untreated living room has a lot of little shades of sound in it that we might hear if we stretch it out in this way. Morphogene, we can of course record the results. take those recorded results in the new splice and time stretch them. And record those results and time stretch them and record those results and time stretch them.
moments will be lost in time. But I'm not sure that's really a bad thing. They're here with us now, and if we have the time to do so, then it's worth stopping to savor them. Sometimes. Sometimes.